That's interesting, James, that you say you feel a lot better now, now that you took the full year off. Is there any part of you that, that thinks about maybe going back and giving another shot? It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday. However, we had Greg Cosell on Tuesday. So today, class is in session with recently retired Patriots running back James White. We got Massachusetts opening up for the betting business tomorrow. Although I might have to ask James if he's getting the itch to get back in the game a little bit. James still pretty young, retired less than a year ago. Be curious to see what James says momentarily. We are presented, of course, by DraftKings. And you know what? Every week, we are the show that gives out at least three winners every week. Thanks a little bit to Mike Singletary, but mainly to me. I want winners. I want people that want to win. I want people like E. Hartman. I believe I'm saying your name right, E. If I'm not, I apologize. It's E.I., um, which I'm, I'm thinking it's E, but I might be wrong. Not only uh, did she follow Ross Tucker Pod on Facebook, she left a review, which I love. That's a great way for me to pick somebody to be the spread the word winner. They follow us and leave a review on Facebook, the new Ross Tucker pod account that Jack put together that is crushing it, where Jack puts the two or three best clips from each show. Love it. E, send me an email, ross at rosstucker.com. Let me know which one of these amazing press passes you would like, or if you prefer a signed picture or a card. You can let me know that as well. Then we got the sponsor confirmation email winner, Scotty Boyd. He's won other stuff before, but what can I tell you? He competes. Almost every week, Scotty Boyd competes. This week, send me a picture of him with a Labatt blue light. It really is that easy. Scotty, let me know what you want this time. Ross at RossTucker.com. And then the YouTube shout out. Goes to Paul Margansky. Paul subscribed over YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL and said, I'm just here for the shout out. I love it. It's that simple. All you have to do is subscribe, make a comment saying you're here for the shout out. Let me know who you want that shout out for, Paul, and I will get that video to you as fast as I can. I love doing that. Love when we get new patrons as well. It's been a while. Become part of the family. It's a private Slack channel, just you and me, me and you, patreon.com slash RT Media. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. As promised, we are joined by eight-year NFL running back, recently retired NFL running back James White, a Super Bowl hero and legend. And by the way, he's brought to us today by DraftKings, which is amazing and very timely because DraftKings Sportsbook is launching in Massachusetts on Friday pending licensure and receipt of regulatory approvals. Yes, I look, I, I would not have been able to come up with that myself. They told me the second part of that, the licensure. I've never said licensure before in my life, James. That's that you just, you, We just broke a record on my show. I don't even know what licensure means. I don't know what that means either, but, you know, betting is a huge thing in the world today. It's a an addiction for some people, but I know it can be fun at the same time. But like I said it makes a lot of money for a lot of people, and it can be fun for sure. And like I said, you can bet small, win big, bet big, win bigger. <laughs> <laughs> James, let's start. Um, let's start with just what you're doing now, man. What, 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 what are you, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, first, just been chasing my kids. I have a three and a two-year-old, a three-year-old boy, two-year-old daughter, so they keep me pretty busy. Other than that, I've been – I called a few games as a play-by-play analyst with Sports USA during the, during the year. I called about four games. I do a radio show on Sirius XM, the, the opening drive every Wednesday morning, so that's been a lot of fun. And I, I did a podcast with Brian Barrett uh, with Spotify, The Ringer, at the Patriots games this past season. So 
I, I dipped into a few things and I said, just waiting for, you know, whatever my next opportunity that comes about. What, uh, what did you like the best? So by the way, dude, you're like following my script. So <laughs> shortly after I retired, I did uh, games for sports USA for a few years, Larry Kahn and the crew. Uh, <laughs> I look back on that uh, fondly. And then um, I had my own morning show on Sirius XM for years. Now, obviously, I'm in the podcast game. Just curious, out of uh, out of those that you did so far, which one do you kind of like the best? It's kind of hard. I like I like doing the Sirius XM and I like calling games. I think calling games is really fun because you get to talk about what's going on in the moment during the game and kind of dissect it for yourself and break it down for – you know, maybe for people who may not necessarily understand the game as much as someone who actually played it. So it's definitely had a fun experience with both. And I know I've learned that a lot of people dabble into a lot of different things. You don't have to just be into one specific thing. And I think that's what makes it really fun. All right. So last summer, I guess in August, you retired after eight years. I think maybe it caught people by surprise a little bit. Just walk me through what happened. Refresh my memory. You had maybe like a hip surgery or something, and then you came to camp. I don't know if you just weren't feeling it or if it didn't really heal. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Just walk me through how it all kind of went down. Well, the previous season, the third game of the year, I fractured my hip. Didn't really know exactly what that meant at the time. And then speaking with the doctors, it was similar to like an injury that Bo Jackson and like Tua had, things of that nature. So – you know, after the injury happened, I went to Chicago to rehab, you know, to be close by my wife's family so they could help out a little bit with the kids. But I, I was on crutches and couldn't do, couldn't do too much for some time. So, you know, initially after the injury, I didn't know whether I was going to play football again or whether, whether or not I was just going to retire. But you know, after some time getting some rehab out there, I started to feel a little bit better. And, you know, Bill called me once free agency came about, and I started to get that itch again that I really wanted to go out there and try and play. I wasn't quite there yet. I still had some time to recover. You know, went out to OTAs and still doing rehab. And even during training camp, was still doing rehab. I was doing a little bit of the on-field stuff, but I just didn't quite feel like myself out there. And I don't want to put myself in a position to necessarily, you know, put myself at a greater risk of injury, which the doctor said it wasn't because the surgery went successfully but the way I was feeling just didn't quite feel like me I don't want to go out there and you know people look at me like dang that guy needs to needs to sit down I don't want to I don't want to be that that guy out there on the field and it'd be hard for me to go out there and think I'm going to be the same player that I was and I wasn't I mean right now I feel I'm obviously much better now after a year of not playing football my, my body feels way better than what it was so I think I made the right decision for me at the time because I don't think I would have been the player that my team needed to be for me to be that season. So um, that's interesting, James, that you say you feel a lot better now, now that you took the full year off. Is there any part of you that, that thinks about maybe going back and giving another shot? I never think about it at times. Uh, I haven't quite done <laughs> the rigorous training that it takes for, you know, to get back out there on the football field. So I don't know what that quite feels like because I've, you know, just take them out of time and just kind of relax and let my body heal up and things of that nature and do, you know, a little bit of rehab, but nothing rigorous. So if I was to ever do that, I would have to, you know, put my body through that type of, you know, workout and all things of that nature and see if I feel the same way after that. Because that's that's the real test. And of course, your body's going to feel great when you're sitting on the couch <laughs> and not, not do it too much. Um. So it does feel great, though, because that's always a concern I have. That's always something I talk to guys about. Uh, you know, I just I like as many guys as possible to leave the game feeling as healthy as possible. Um, so, uh, you know, in terms of day to day life with your kids, it's not bothering. You feel like you're pretty good. Yeah, I feel like I'm good. And like I said, obviously. It's different when you actually play a, a physical contact sport and, you know, You've just been previously heard it. It brings on a lot of different things <laughs> compared to when you're just living your regular daily life, just walking around. Obviously, your kids may be put in some weird, awkward positions sometimes as far as how crazy they can get. But it's it's fun. Like I said, they keep me moving around, get my steps in, get my get my sweat in, moving around the house with them. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. Um, 
How do you feel about playing your entire career with one team, with the New England Patriots? It was it's kind of an honor, especially in this day and age. You know, guys are on different teams left and right. It's kind of rare to see you know, people stay on one team for, you know, four years or so. So it's definitely an honor for a team to still want you to come back after all those years and, you know, I don't want to use the word like loyalty because obviously the team's going to do what's best for themselves and the player wants to do what's best for themselves. So it's just a great feeling to be in one spot your entire career. I know with the Patriots, there's been quite a few guys that have done that and to be in that category is definitely really cool. It, it is an honor. It is really cool um, because it is rare. I don't know if you can see um, how well you can see behind me, James, but I played for five teams, <laughs> so I was the anti uh, James White. I do think there's something special, especially if you're going to live back in the area of of being a guy that plays their entire career for one team. But I guess I'm also, you know, I also wonder, aren't you like curious what it's like at other places, especially because I played New England, so I played New England 0506. So especially what it's like. You know, not with Bill, not with New England. You ever you ever think, man, I just kind of wonder what it's like somewhere else. Oh, definitely. Especially if you've been in one place your entire career, you always kind of wonder, you know, what the other side is kind of like. You hear stories of other teams that you know, may not be exactly similar, but a little bit similar. And you hear kind of the, the other stories where it's like the complete opposite, where, you know, guys showing up late, you know, guys yelling at coaches, things of that nature. So, you got to take the good with the bad wherever you are. You're not going to like any place, you know, 100%. There's going to be some good things. There's going to be some bad things. You just have to take the good with the bad. Just put your work out there and put your best foot forward. And that's all you can do is go out there and be your best you and compete and just do your job. But as I said, everybody wonders, especially if you've been on one team, what, is, what it would be like to be on another team. And I said, I've been to free agency twice, you know, once hurt. So, obviously, there wasn't going to be many options there. The one time after – probably like the worst year of my career. So I mean, that wasn't going to be too many options. <laughs> so for me, the there wasn't really too much of an open door of going to another team. It was just pretty much the Patriots for me. So I didn't realize this till I was um, doing some research on you, James. So first of all, in eight years, man, to win three Super Bowls, that's just crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just nuts. So congratulations. Of course, the one year I was in New England, I always tell the story, James. Brady was eleven and zero in the playoffs until they put me in the game. <laughs> he was he was three and zero in oh one, three and zero in oh three, three and zero no, yeah three and zero in oh four, um, and then oh five when I was there, he beat Jacksonville. So I guess he was 10 and 0 in playoff games till I got there. And then I actually got a little time on special teams against the Broncos, and that's the first game he lost. By the way, that's also the only playoff game I ever played in. The only playoff game I ever played in was also the first one that Brady ever lost. So he was he was 10 and 0 before they put me in the game. Um, which is kind of funny, but that's amazing to win three Super Bowls like that. You know, I didn't realize you had the record for most receptions and most points in a Super Bowl. And then Jalen Hurts tied it in this most recent Super Bowl. So, okay, first of all, did you know you had the record? I'm sure you did. Secondly, when you're watching this year's Super Bowl, are you, like, rooting against Jalen Hurts? Like, talk to me about that. No, never rooting against him. You know, records are meant to be broken. Somebody's going to break it eventually. And he was having a really good performance, you know, I was thinking they were going to win the football game, but Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs played a really good second half and came back and and won that football game. But I said I saw people were tweeting me once he tied the record, like, "Oh, your your record's about to get broken by Jalen Hurts." But it's, it's fun to watch somebody else have a great performance on that stage, especially a guy like himself. You know, coming to the year had a lot of doubters, a lot of people questioned him, and to perform the way he did all year long to get on that stage in the Super Bowl and perform that way was huge. Uh, it was. It was absolutely unbelievable. And that's an interesting number, by the way, that you guys have tied there. You both scored 20 points in the Super Bowl. 
it's it's not easy to do because you have to have three touchdowns and a two point conversion, right? Yeah, it's a it's kind of an awkward number, <laughs> but I say if he would have got that ball in his hands that last drive, who knows? He might have broken it. <laughs> how um how often do people mention to you uh, the the Falcon Super Bowl and how well you played in that game and the comeback and all that? Like, I mean, you live back in Massachusetts, so um, I'm just curious for a guy like you. How often does that get mentioned to you? I guess brought up all the time. Pretty much, I wouldn't say every time, but probably like every other time I interact with, you know, a fan or somebody, they they always bring up that game. But I mean, like I said, it's the biggest game of the year. Everybody's tuning in, watching. And obviously there's a lot of emotions just during that game. Good good emotions and bad emotions. But we ended up with great emotions at the end of the game. But like I said, it's one of those those moments, whether you're playing or watching, it's something that you would never forget. So I don't have a problem with it. Like I said, it's the Super Bowl. Everybody's watching that game. And, of course, everybody's going to remember that game first and foremost. Okay. Does your wife ever get sick of it? Like, <laughs> if someone if, – if you're if you're at the Stop and Shop or Dunkin' Donuts or wherever you're at up there and someone says, James, that's Super Bowl, man, is your wife ever – because it's funny, man. So, like, I'll be at the beach or something – and, um, you know, somebody might recognize me from the media stuff and come up to me and say, hi, my wife and my oldest daughter, they're just not that interested in it. Like they, cause they're kind of used to it and they don't, they don't want to like engage. So they just kind of move away and they let me do my thing. My younger daughter, James, she comes right up. She comes running over and is like, hi, I'm his daughter. <laughs> it's so funny, man. It's so funny. How does your wife react to it? She, she doesn't mind. I guess it's a little bit more awkward if it's just us two and we bump into somebody that somebody like has a, like a full blown conversation without acknowledging her. I think that's kind of when it gets a little bit awkward when they just kind of step to us and just kind of leave your wife like to the side and they're just kind of like just standing there. But my wife doesn't care too much. Just, Probably a little bit more annoying if it happens more often than not, but I would say it doesn't happen that often when we go into public. But it's it's funny now because my my son, like he has an idea, he's three, he has an idea that I played football and whatnot. Uh, I went to the zoo last year here in Massachusetts, and like somebody like recognized me, like they're like James White. So like now my son just like randomly in the house or whatever, like James White, like he like calls me by my. First and last name, things of that nature. He thinks it's hilarious, but it's, it's just fun to see how kids kind of interact with that whole interaction. <laughs> that is awesome. So your three-year-old every once in a while will just say, James, why? <laughs> it's, it's quite hilarious. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, all right. A quick question on, on the um, current team. So you played in 21 for, I guess, only three games, so you got hurt. Just your thoughts and uh, level of confidence in Mac Jones. I know that that's a big topic up there after this past year. I have all the confidence in the world with him. Obviously, you know, last year he you know, had a little bit of a regression and whatnot. New offensive coordinator, first time offensive coordinator, and he had some ups and downs. But I thought he tried to finish off the year after he came back from injury. Tried to finish, you know, on a higher note. But he's a guy. He's He's smart. He pushes himself. He works. He puts the work in. And I said, I was there with him, you know, for, for that year or well, the first few games of that year. And then you know, a little bit in training camp at OTAs. And he's, I said, he's a guy who knows how to motivate his team. And I said, I think he has some big things coming for him this year with Bill O'Brien coming back. I don't know. Bill O'Brien probably was there when, when you were playing. No, nah, he was after me, but I know Bill. Yeah. yeah. Mine was uh, Josh McDaniels. Oh, Josh McDaniels. Okay. All yeah, right. Josh was the OC. Okay. In fact, James, just to to, 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 to get, take it all the way back, when they signed me in 05, uh, Matt Patricia was the assistant offensive line coach. Hey. <laughs> so Scar was the O-line coach. Patricia was – and so Patricia got me up to speed for that next game or whatever. It's yeah. kind of funny. Full circle. But, yeah, I think with Bill O'Brien coming back, obviously – a very experienced offensive coordinator, his coach in college and in the NFL. I think he's a fired up coach. He, you know, doesn't take no stuff. And I think that's what Mac likes. He likes to be coached hard because 
you know, he holds himself to a high standard. I think this will be a, a match made in heaven. And I think the, you know, offensive line will play better this year. I think they add, you know, see what they do with Jacoby. Hopefully they bring him back. I think they have a lot of talent in that room if they can get the right guys around them. And I think it'll be a big year for the offense. James, are people talking a lot and fired up about about uh, betting becoming legalized there in Massachusetts? You know, I haven't heard it too much here in Massachusetts just yet, but I I know it's a huge thing. I know some of my friends they they love they love betting. I try always try to persuade them the opposite way, but it's it's fun. Like I said, it's it's a way for you to for people maybe for people who don't necessarily watch sports, it's a way for them to interact with the game because they just like betting, and it's a way to watch a game and. You can bet on player performances. You can bet on the spread. You can bet on, you know, all different types of things. And I think that's what makes it so fun because it's different types of bettors and everybody enjoys it in a different type of way. And it's it's just funny to see, especially with social media being so huge now. <laughs> you can see everybody's kind of reaction to their parlays and all of that. <laughs> well, listen, I mentioned earlier, I mentioned again, DraftKings Sportsbook launching in Massachusetts on Friday pending licensure and receipt of regulatory approvals. James, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Glad to hear that you are feeling better. And uh, don't take any of my gigs. Feel free to take those. (laughs) Keep doing Sports USA and Sirius XM. Don't come for my gigs, man. Thank you. I won't come for your gigs, man. You're doing a great job. (laughs) Great stuff there with James White. Love the story about James White! James White! Uh, You know what else I love? Knowing I'm protected when I'm traveling in an airport, on a plane, in a hotel, like I am right now. Every device, phones, computers, tablets, has a unique IP address. It's like your internet phone number, and it reveals all kinds of personal information about you, like where you live. So it's pretty easy for people to find your IP address, and then know all kinds of stuff about you. Listen, ExpressVPN is an app that hides your real IP address and replaces it with a dummy one, keeping you safe and private. Here's the coolest part about ExpressVPN. It lets you choose what country you want your IP address to be in. So if you subscribe to like Netflix or Disney Plus like we do, You get a whole bunch of other shows available to you by just changing the country of your ExpressVPN. Secure your family's online activity and unlock tons of new shows by visiting expressvpn.com slash Tucker. Again, use my link. You can get extra three months, three months extra free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S vpn.com slash tucker express vpn.com slash tucker to learn more tucks takes all right ross we'll start with the news of the baltimore ravens placing the non-exclusive franchise tag on lormar jackson very interesting on a bunch of different levels number one This allows other teams to negotiate with him starting March 15th. This allows other teams to sign him to an offer sheet. And then the Ravens have a week to match or not. And if they don't, they get two first round picks. The Falcons reportedly have already said they are not interested. I am personally very interested to find out exactly what ends up happening here with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Number one, do any teams give him the fully guaranteed contract that he covets? You know, I said this on Twitter on Tuesday, at Ross Tucker NFL, but you almost wonder if the owners talk to each other and say, and I know this is illegal, trust me, I know. Hey, don't be pulling a Haslam. Don't be pulling a Haslam. They do not want the precedent of more five-year fully guaranteed deals. So I am extremely curious about that. That's number one. Number two, what teams would do it? What teams would be interested? What teams should do it? 
Number three, would the Ravens match it at that point and be like, okay, he got it, we'll match it, or would they move on and take the two first-round picks? Very, very interesting. I don't know what they would do. Kind of depends on the contract, I guess. And then, you know, so they're kind of giving it, they're kind of putting the ball in Lamar's court, being like, all right, Lamar, go show you can get the contract you've been trying to get. Go see if you can get it. It's a little bit different because the team has to give up two first-round picks too. But that's what the Ravens are essentially saying. Here's the other thing. Would Lamar play for $32 million this year? Or would he say, yeah, I'm not doing that, guys. I'm, I'm holding out. You know, I, unless you guys give me the $45 million for the exclusive, I'm not playing this year for $32 million. Very, very interesting. Makes it makes the offseason so much more interesting to me now that the Ravens did this. Tuck Stakes. Right at the buzzer, the New York Giants signed Daniel Jones to a four-year, $160 million contract with an additional $35 million in incentives. And with that, they placed the franchise tag on Saquon Barkley. Again, fascinating. Listen, Jack, you've been the producer of this show for a while now. You heard Greg Cosell say the Giants were going to pay Daniel Jones on this show. You heard me say he was going to get a lot more money than people realized. It's exactly what happened. Forty million a year. He gets eighty-two million the first two years. Eighty-two million, way more than Derek Carr, way more than Geno Smith. Twenty-five-year-old, ascending, young, healthy, athletic, starting quarterbacks don't grow on trees. They would have had to franchise him themselves. Now, it is a little interesting that they didn't franchise him for the $32 million. I don't think anybody's going to give up two first-round picks for Daniel Jones, but they didn't want Saquon to hit the open market. This enabled the Giants to keep both, but they sure are betting on Daniel Jones continuing to get better and being their quarterback. I mean, Daniel Jones essentially gets at least $82 million guaranteed over the next two years. Saquon Barkley gets $10 million. Saquon Barkley's got to be like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, you know, I've gotten hurt twice. Everything I've done for this team over the last five years, and Daniel Jones gets seventy million more guaranteed than I do. What a time to be alive! Tuck stakes. After being passed over as the Eagles' defensive coordinator, Denard Wilson heads to Baltimore as their new defensive backs coach. Kind of knew this was going to happen, or at least knew he was going to go somewhere. It just gets hashtag awkward if you stay where you were, and they passed you over. Just not a good scene for anybody. Tuck Stakes. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers released Donovan Smith, while the Miami Dolphins do St. Byron Jones. We've been talking about this the last few episodes. It'll happen more. It'll happen again Monday. Um, in Monday's episode, teams are clearing the salary cap deck. Byron Jones already came out and said he can't play, he can't run or jump. So that was a no-brainer. And Donovan Smith, man, he started a lot of games for a guy that's as inconsistent as he has been throughout his career. But at least it gives somebody like the Chiefs, you know, a viable starting left tackle if they can't get it done with Orlando Brown, which I think is interesting. Lastly, Jack, you know what I'm doing tonight? I'm with my high school friends. I'm in Colorado. And I'm drinking Labatt Blue Light because it's delicious, because we love it, and because there's something about being at a sporting event or skiing where you just got to have Labatt Blue Lights. Drink some Labatt Blue Flight Lights with your friends this weekend. Live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Always some shout outs. It's the best deal in podcasting. You get a shout out for your business at the end of every show. For 100 bucks a month. Are you kidding me? Pizza Boy Brewing was there last Saturday. It was amazing. Sportaculture, humanheadnyc.com, steakhousesports.com, go bangles.com, Evergreen Economics, backofficeschedule.com, and of course, the greatest gift for any occasion. You guys know how strongly I feel about this. Myfrontpagestory.com. We will be back bright and early. With the college draft and the Ross Tucker football podcast Monday morning. Have an awesome weekend, everybody. 
I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.